about Johnny Appleseed from the 1948 Disney anthology Melody Time. Some may have learned about him in a poem, and some may have heard the rhyme that goes, Here comes Johnny Appleseed. Appleseeds are all he needs. Planting orchards on his way out west, wears a pot upon his head. Beneath the trees he makes his bed, folks say Johnny's apples are the best. In these depictions, Johnny Appleseed is a folksy frontier figure who spends his time wandering in the West, joyfully sowing apple seeds and making friends with everyone he meets. He's often depicted as an eccentric but harmless character whose passion is simply planting apple trees. But people may be surprised to know that Johnny Appleseed was not just a character from American folklore, but a real person. And while poems, rhymes, and songs capture some of his likeness, they don't tell the whole story of Johnny Appleseed. Indeed, the true story of Johnny Appleseed is a far cry from the Disney-fied version presented in 1948. For starters, Johnny Appleseed's real name was not Johnny Appleseed, but John Chapman. And while it's true that Chapman spent his life planting apple, his motives weren't as wholesome as some poems suggest. For example, one poem about Johnny Appleseed goes, Why did he do it? We do not know. He wished that apples might root and grow. But the truth is that Johnny Appleseed had a purpose in mind when he took his apple seeds out west. The purpose? Money. Appleseed's main goal in planting apples was to sell orchards to homesteaders who were moving west en masse in the 19th century in search of new frontiers and new opportunities. Appleseed set out to profit from this trend in western migration. And the apples he planted? They were not meant for pies or cobblers or even to enjoy fresh from the tree. Rather, they were used for the booming 19th century business of making hard apple cider. But while Johnny Appleseed was, in some ways, far from the down-home character that appears in American folklore, poems, and stories about him, they do get some facts right. He was eccentric, he was a nomad who traveled across the West, and he did plant apples, more than a thousand acres of them. This is the full story of Johnny Appleseed, from his motivations for planting apple seeds, to his unusual religious beliefs, to his sudden and surprising demise. You're listening to History Uncovered, brought to you by the digital publisher All That's Interesting, where we explore the uncharted corners of the natural world and the world past. I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Kalina Fraga. And I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Austin Harvey. Today, we're discussing the truth behind the widely mythologized story of Johnny Appleseed. Had you heard of Johnny Appleseed before or? Yeah, I mean, I have definitely heard, you know, heard the name, if not any information about him. Funnily enough, was my girlfriend's dad brought pizza over last night and we were hanging out with him for a bit. And he started talking about Johnny Appleseed randomly. Just randomly? <laughs> yeah, it was like we were talking about like gardening um, cause he gave us like a bunch of tomatoes and they're like coming in now. And, you know, so we were like, oh yeah, pretty cool. And then we were, ta- we were just kind of talking about like how beer used to be really important to people. And it was like, oh yeah, the, you know, the diet was like beer and bread if you were poor. And then mm-hmm. he started talking about how Johnny Appleseed, uh, had a bunch of land because he, and he would sell it off and like <laughs> how genius he was. And I was like, that, wow. I was like, I don't, I was like, I'm actually literally doing a podcast about this tomorrow. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's so very random. Weird. There's a there's a word for like things that you notice. It's like sometimes you like learn a new word and suddenly you see it like everywhere. Mm. And there's a word yeah. for that uh phenomenon. I can't remember what it is. But uh anyway, yeah, I, I didn't really know much about Johnny Appleseed until I was editing this post like a year ago. But yeah, we'll get into it. Uh basically, as I said in the intro he's this folk figure but he's actually based on a real guy so to go to the history of the real guy um whose name was john chapman he was born on september 26 1774 so this was sort of right as the nation not even a nation yet the colonies were moving towards the american revolution um somewhat of a tumultuous childhood his mother died when he was very young his father remarried and had 10 more children whoa yeah the bigger thing for him was that he was coming of age during this time of like these massive changes there was the american revolution the foundation of the country and once that happened westward expansion kind of began in earnest and this began like right after the revolutionary war but it started to really happen after the louisiana purchase in 1803 and surprisingly to me, anyway, apples played a pretty big role in westward expansion. 
Hmm. This was because in 1792, the Ohio Company of Associates promised 100 acres of land to permanent settlers who established homesteads. But they had to prove that they were permanent. This is how this came up yesterday. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's fascinating that he knew that. I thought that was sort of like a, kind of an unknown thing. Yeah, he's an engineer and he's a very uh, inquisitive guy. He knows a lot about mm. just like random things. But yeah, this is the part he was talking to me about was that because you could get so much land if you could establish a homestead because apple trees took less time to grow comparatively to like other fruit trees Uh you could very quickly just like plant these and be like cool see i have a homestead i have all these things growing right look at this apple orchard i have that's what this company yeah to prove your homestead was permanent you could plant 50 apple trees and 20 peach trees in three years and then then you could prove that yeah you had this orchard and you were planning to stay but johnny appleseed had this idea and he'd been kind of like living this nomadic existence that he would plant orchards all over the West and then sell them to settlers. And then the settlers could be like, this is my orchard, you know, I live here. So he, at the turn of the 19th century, went West. Um, He kind of traveled by river in a catamaran made of canoes. He went all over Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, um, Indiana. And he was, you know, kind of a interesting guy. He, He didn't carry very much, just some tools and some apple seeds, which he collected from cider mills. And, you know, I was reading some like poems and stuff about Johnny Appleseed and stories and stuff. And like they kind of describe him as this guy who's just like wandering happily, just (laughs) throwing apple seeds, you know, just because he loves apples and nature and everything. But he was actually really methodical. He would he would fence in the area with with fallen logs, plant his trees. And he knew where all this stuff was. He would return and kind of tend to the saplings so that he could sell them uh, to pioneers. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, we were discussing uh, or we will discuss. I mean, we recorded history happy hour first, but we we will. Right. We were discussing about how hard apple cider and, and beer and everything played an important role in colonial times, um, and it was important during this time too because it, water wasn't safe to drink. So pioneers drank a lot of apple cider, hard apple cider. Right, right. Same reason they drank a lot of beer and uh, wine and whatnot. It's really interesting. There's this book. Uh, I forget who it's by. The book is called drunk and it's a it's a history of alcohol and he makes a very interesting point in saying that like it's not necessarily that people really liked getting drunk that's why they drank so much alcohol he was like if they had discovered that drinking the water that was sitting in a barrel of rotten fish was healthier to drink or like didn't kill you or make Mm. you sick they would have been drinking that it just so happens that alcohol was cleaner and made you feel pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was just constantly consumed by these people. Right. So um, apples were important for multiple reasons. Johnny Appleseed, during this time as he was uh, planting his apple trees and tending to his saplings and everything, developed uh, a reputation among the people he met. He apparently sometimes wore only a coffee sack as clothing. Some reports say he wore a mush pot on his head. That comes up in rhymes and stuff, but it's probably not true because it'd be a heavy thing to wear on your head. He was also he also followed this this religion called the Swen, Swedenborgian Church, which was founded by a man who believed that angels were passing him secret messages from God. So Johnny Appleseed believed in that. Okay. Yes, and he as he traveled, he would carry pieces of uh, Swedenborgian theological writings, which he would give away to people he met. I believe I read somewhere he kept these in his hat, whether or not that was a, a mush pot kept, right. kept them up there. Interesting. He abhorred violence towards people, animals, and trees, of course, you know. That's nice. Gotta protect your trees. He was happily abstinent and never married and believed he would be rewarded in heaven for this. And yeah, just spent his life wandering the West, planting apple orchards, and wow. eventually came to not own exactly, I guess, but he he oversaw like 1,200 acres of land of these apple orchards and everything wow yeah he you know just kind of walked everywhere his whole life and so in march uh 1845 when he was around 70 he came to a friend's house after walking 70 miles that day i mean sorry 15 miles that day and everything was fine at first he stayed the night and they like traded stories and apple seed read from the bible but the next morning he developed this fever and died soon afterwards they called it winter plague at the time, but it was probably pneumonia. Oof. 
Yeah. He was 70, you know, he was wandering a lot in the cold. Right. And newspapers at the time mourned his passing. One said, he is supposed to have considerable property, yet denied himself almost the common necessities of life. Wow. So. You know, it's it's really uh, interesting. Th- this guy, had he written while he was traveling, would have had a better case for writing a work as revered as Walden, uh, more so than Henry David Thoreau. Hmm. And I'm, I'm thinking about that because I, I looked to my left and I have my copy of Walden over there. But it, I think Henry David Thoreau famously uh, over-exaggerated his living by nature kind of situation. Mm. Um, like his mother would bring him cooked meals and things like that. Oh. <laughs> so he wasn't yeah. wasn't quite the woodsman he portrayed himself to be. But <laughs> Johnny Appleseed is fascinating because like, yeah, the folk legends make him out to be maybe a little bit more like of a goofy kind of guy like oh you're just walking and throwing apple seeds and he was kind of but like not that much of an exaggeration like he did kind of live that life Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think he he did there was like another layer to it and that he was doing this not out of pure joy of nature i mean he was he had a business right strategy in mind but yeah he seemed very comfortable being in the woods and just living very with very basic things and uh right like he surely could have afforded better clothing but probably but i mean his his beliefs too it's you know never marrying being abstinent um the swedenborgian stuff he you know he's kind of doing his own his own thing he didn't really care for these material yeah. comforts that other people did right. um yeah i guess the kind of sad part of the story is that even though he planted all these apples it spent his whole life doing this most of them were destroyed during prohibition. Federal agents came and, and chopped these trees down because they, they worried um, they'd be turned into hard apple cider. So most of them are gone Ugh. today. I God, know. Prohibition was like one of history's biggest mistakes. Pretty. Well, it's just pretty strange um, <laughs> to think that it actually got passed. Yeah. Nothing good came of it. It like contributed significantly to the rise of organized crime. People right, were still definitely. drinking. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, even like the president, I think, would be like drinking, you know. Yeah. People, oh, yeah. Anti-prohibition politicians would have parties and they'd like give out drinks. And mm-hmm. yeah. And then you see like this, the, you know, they, they destroyed Johnny Appleseed's apple trees. And it's like, come on. Yeah. I know these trees are like more than 100 years old and belong to this part of American heritage. And mm-hmm. Right. Too bad. Feels like <clears> anti-patriotic <throat> to take them down. I know. But still, like the story of Johnny Appleseed is it's like, I mean, it, it was a Disney movie based off of it. Like it's in the cultural zeitgeist of America. So, yeah, as American as apple pie, as one might say. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in any case, even though his trees were destroyed, he did become an American folk hero. There are lots of poems and songs and all sorts of things about him. So his legacy lives yeah. on, even if his apples did not. Yeah. Well, good for him. You know, uh, if if there is a heaven, I hope he he has been rewarded in it for living the life he did. I'm glad that this wasn't yeah. one of those deep dives where we find out there was actually some mm-hmm. horrible, horrible side to him. Right. He's actually <laughs> a serial like, killer. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Johnny Appleseed was Jack the Ripper or something like that. No, no. So anyway, this was kind of just like a fun little little story, and you can read more about it on the site. But I guess now for our members, we have more, so much more. It's actually, yeah, it's actually history longer. Happy Hour was a lot longer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's actually longer. So if you're not a member already and you want literally like th- like three times as much content, right? Well, we had another person. We had a we had Amber, um, our colleague, with us as well. So we had a lot to talk right, about the three right. of us. Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't often get to talk to Amber, so it was very nice. Um, so it if you want to go and you want to check that out, go to allthatsinteresting dot com slash membership. You can sign up there for just five dollars a month and get so much more content, uh, an ad free reading experience on the website, an exclusive dark mode, and other perks. As always, if you want to get in contact with us, you can send an email to podcast at allthatsinteresting dot com or give us a call and leave a voicemail at the number that I do not have written down. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the number is 929-526-3029. Yeah, and follow us on social media uh at Real History Uncovered on Instagram, no, on TikTok 
and at History Uncovered Podcast on Instagram. Sorry, I'm unmedicated today. (laughs) 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 Or on YouTube.com, where you might already be listening to the audio here. And go ahead and give us a positive review while you're at it. It helps us out uh, psychologically and in the algorithm. (laughs) So, so true. Um, Yeah, and always, you know, visit the site, allinteresting.com, where we publish things every single day. Yeah. Lots of new cool stuff. Yeah, and stay stay tuned for our upcoming episodes as well. Uh, got some Halloween oriented yeah. things spooky planned, season. spooky season stuff. So get some hard <laughs> apple cider <laughs> yes. and cozy up by the fire and listen to us talk about the Jersey Devil because that's yeah. coming up next. <laughs>